songbook to page number 275. How firm a foundation. Stand with us, please. 275. today because of a firm foundation. This world, this world today is not on a very firm foundation. But you and I that are believers in the Lord, listen, both steadfast and sure, and not only that, but thank God, unmovable. Amen. That's what we have. We're going to pray, and uh, Brother Mike Baskins is sick that beside those on the list. Brother Mike Baskins come down with some kind of virus. Uh, they asked us to pray for him. He's having a tough time of it. Rose Corbett, which is Jenny and Stephen's little girl, I think it was uh, poison oak or poison ivy all on her face, so they had to take her to the, uh, to the uh, urgent care yesterday. Pray for Rose, Miss Donna Thrift, surgery just a little bit ago, maybe now, and Brother Ray Emery, all right? Brother Ray's not here. Let's remember these, and we'll go together uh, as a church in prayer. Brother Randy Jr., please. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time to be back in your house, dear God, Lord. We pray that now that you'd just be with our church service, you'd be with our pastors, he preaches, dear God, Lord. You'd give him the words you'd have him to say. Help us to listen and be responsive to our man of God, dear God, Lord. We pray right now for our church family. There's a lot sick, dear God, Lord, a lot of physical uh, problems, dear God, Lord, a lot of spiritual problems, dear Lord. I pray that you just have your will and way in each, Lord. We pray right now for Donna Thrift right now, dear God, I pray that you be with her. She may be in surgery right now. You know what she needs. I pray that you be with the doctors, dear God, Lord, and just to have your will and way in her life. You be with Brother Ray Emery right now, dear God, Lord. We love him. I pray that you just uh, be with him, dear God, Lord. Help him physically, emotionally, everything that he needs, dear God, Lord. You just be with that, that man. I pray that you continue to be with uh, Eddie and Wanda Fisher, dear God, Lord. Yeah. You touch them. Have you well away in their life. Yeah. Thank you for being with Jenny, dear Lord. I pray that you be with her daughter right now. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done. I pray that you continue to be with our church family. You know, just raise us up, dear God, Lord. Help us to draw closer to you. Lead and guide and direct in everything we do in this church service today, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated all over the building. We appreciate all of you being here. We appreciate our visitors being here, and may God bless you. Thank you for coming to Mountain View Baptist Church. Quickly, I don't uh, know who this is. They put it up here, a little pink, uh, pink uh, uh, attachment and a little baby pacifier. You get that during the break, all right, for the moms. Uh, now, we also today 
Uh, if you were not here on a particular Father's Day, we do have gifts available. Brother Landon, I'm going to put you in charge of that. Brother Landon, they're right here in the first room. So you see Landon Lancaster, if you did not get a Father's Day gift. And then Miss Jenna Dover, she's right here in the choir. She had ordered additional Mother's Day gifts, those little jewelry boxes. They have some hot pink. Some of you might want to change your color. I think she has 10 or 15 of the hot pink. Those are in, so if you want to change out your Mother's Day gift or you wasn't here, please do that and see Miss Jenner right after the service. And then if you have not still brought your baby bottles, it's not too late. The, uh, the uh, represent representatives from the uh, Carolina Pregnancy Center have not picked them up. They'll probably get them tomorrow or Tuesday. But uh, you bring those and put them in the first office on the left and join those other baby bottles. I think there's 25 or 30 in there now. And if you have one at home, fill it up with change or, say, or check, whatever you want to do, and that'll be greatly appreciated, all right? It's going for another uh, outreach ministry. Now, this Wednesday night, we'll not be here at church, all right? Listen close. We'll not be here. And uh, I, I, I text Brother Joe Arthur. The service starts at 730 Wednesday night. Both choirs combined will be singing. Uh, we did this last year. I believe Brother Brian McBride is preaching. I think that's what he told me. Uh, may, maybe Brother... Um, Maybe, maybe Brother Knox, I'm not sure he told me. I'll find out by tonight, but whoever it is, it'll be great. So both choirs are singing Wednesday night at the Greer Camp meeting. And uh, if Yank, I know Nathan's gone, but if Yank can drive a bus, that'll be good. If not, we'll just all meet over there, okay? Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering. Please read the bulletin, other uh, good announcements in there. And if you'll tend to all these things right after service, that'll be greatly appreciated, all right? Choir's going to sing. Brother Cam's doing a good job of the choir. And by the way, this offering, somebody put $425 in. We appreciate the $425, but you had a date of the 11th of June, but you did not put your name. We need your name, so if that was yours on, in the blue envelope, uh, come tell me after service or tell Miss Andrea. We'd like to get folks credit for giving that those finances, all right? God bless you. Play, pray for the choir. Sing it, choir. Sing it. Brother Doug Five, will you join us, please? 81. Brother Doug, can you come up here and pray with us, if you will? And ask the blessing on the offering come this way. I'm going to give this envelope to Andrea. And while we shake hands, you slip up here and tell her that uh, you were the one to give that $425, all right? We'll give that to our sister. Now, listen close also. There are two revivals going on this week. One's at Ingleside. Brother Shane Ezell is the pastor. And Brother Mark Stroud is preaching. I plan on going there tomorrow night. Tuesday night, the Jones family is preaching up at Progress, plan on going there. Tuesday night, you're welcome to ride and go with us or meet us, whatever. 
at any of these revival meetings, all right? Well, Brother uh, Doug, if you'll ask a blessing on the offering, please. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, glad to be back. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us live another day. Thank you for, the, for, the, for our church at Merritt View Baptist Church. Thank you for blessing everyone that's here today. Thank you for the one that all that gives. Lord, we praise you, thank you for offering Jesus for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you. Sing 80, out, 81, out. 81. Ladies, give me all you got. Take your songbooks and stand with the choir. Page number 479. Onward, Christian soldiers.
visit. We have visitors, so we want to make them feel welcome. Listen, cross the aisle, make somebody feel welcome, shake hands one with another, tend to these other things, all right? I'd say Miss Jada's picking that ivory pretty good. Amen. Thank you, Miss Jada. Appreciate it. All right. Sign evangelism, brand new right here. Sign evangelism, the big Gaffney Peach, Peach Parade is coming to town. That's July 15th, Saturday, 940. We'll, we'll let you know where we're all going to be that morning. Hopefully get a good area to be able to be a bit good witness for the Lord. Saturday, July 15th. All right. 940 a.m. All right. Y'all ready? This is the Owens family. Is blooming there for me where the 
came out of this uh, this song anyway. That's all right. And we got the mom and two daughters, all right? Lisa and her two girls, all right? God bless you. I was drifting on the sea of despair. I was wondering, I was wondering in this old world of care. Jesus found me, Jesus found me, heard my sinful cry, heard me praying, me praying on my knees at night. Now I'm singing, now I'm singing such a glad new song. Cause I'm happy, as I'm happy as I go along. I don't know, I don't know just what I do. If the Lord wasn't walking by my side. Great, great. You say amen to that? I look goodness. Right, come here, Skylar. Come here, Skylar. Come here, baby. How, how old are you? 11, 11 years old. Uh, Daddy sang. Well, wait a minute. Grandma, grand, Grandpa sung for the glory of God. Amen. And by the way, probably singing up in heaven. Son sang. Uh, son's wife sung. Oldest girl sang. And now you coming right along. That's great. Amen. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can be seated, all right? She's going to stay here and help me preach, all right? <laughs> she might as well do it all. Amen. It's great. Train up a child in the way they should go. When they were old, when they, were old they will not depart from it. You, and, and you train them. It's not only what you say. It's what you do. What you show them, all right? Take your Bibles, everybody, and go to Luke chapter 15. You've been here to go ahead, Brother Josh. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let us let us never be ashamed to give him praise. Never be ashamed. Amen. Luke chapter 15 is a very very well known and well read and well rehearsed and well preached passages of scripture and of course taught in the Sunday school classrooms and you know the you know the chapter you know what it's about you know uh, you know that um, that uh, it's a it's a parable you know that and uh, it is one parable and I believe brother Iverser has three separate movements three three uh, three sections if you please and we'll deal with some of those in just a moment the Lord willing I want to show you the introduction to Luke 15. It's found in verse 1. And, and somebody said this, I read this years ago, Brother Galloway, that the key to unlocking Luke 15 is hanging at the door. And the door is the first verses. So here's the key. 
Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. That, that, that has been incense to thousands of Adam's lost race to this day. I'm so glad he receives and eats with sinners. Why, why are you so glad? Because I'm one of them. I'm one of them. And so this, this was a charge. Brother Galloway, this was an accusation. This was given not as a compliment, not as a kind gesture. Brother Spencer, it was given as a, a barbed arrow. They were criticizing him. But in essence, he says, let me tell you exactly how I do receive and eat with sinners. And then we have the story of the lost sheep. And then we have the story of the lost silver or the coin. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have the story of the lost son. And all, listen close, and I'm going to hurry. All three are lost. They're all lost. Do you say amen to that? But all three are found. They're all found. And in the finding thereof, it brings great rejoicing. And you know what? It is nothing less or more than a great picture of God's love for sinners. And I could say and add right here that with the lost, with the lost sheep, you have a picture or the ministry of Jesus as the great shepherd. With the lost coin, you have a picture or a representation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that lights a light and sweeps the house and finds a coin. But then when you come to the story of the prodigal son, you have the, the representation with the dad of God the Father. And so could I say to this audience today that the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus, could I say that the Holy Spirit, and may I say today that God the Father is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. I tell you, instead of reading all of it, I want to show you verse 4. Look at verse 4, everybody. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is, somebody say that word, lost. The sheep was lost. The sheep was lost. All right, underline that until he find it. Look, if you will, in verse number six. And when he cometh home, brother Josh, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Look at verse number eight, everybody. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, and by the way, ladies, this was some kind of, of headdress. This is what I understand. Well, Johnny, it was some kind of gift as a dowry on her wedding day. And actually, Brother Philip Griffith, it was a headdress or with, with the ornamentation of these 10 coins, this 10 pieces of silver. And it was very valuable and very sentimental and costly. And she, she treasured it, Brother Kevin White, and she loved what her bridegroom gave her. But look at verse number eight. What woman having 10 pieces of silver in that headdress, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligence till she found it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost. You understand now, not only was the sheep lost, but I want to say secondly, the silver or the coin or were shekel, the silver was lost. And, let, and don't, hurt, don't let me hurt your feelings, but they weren't backslid. 
they were lost. You could preach that in an application, but the primary interpretation of the story is a parable of lostness. Look at verse 24 quickly. Verse 24, I'm going to show you some things in a minute. Verse 24, for this my son was dead, and that's where you were, and is alive again. That's where we are now. Watch this right here. This is shouting ground. He was lost and is found. I'm glad he found me. I'm glad he, hey, I couldn't find myself. But he found me and he found you. The Bible said, and uh, that's verse 24, uh, and they began to be merry. Drop down lastly to verse 32. Look at verse 32. And you know the, uh, the uh, elder brother was upset and the elder brother had a bad attitude, Miss uh, Nikki, but look what it said in verse 32. It was meet, necessary, appropriate, that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Three movements. Three entities. And all three of them are lost. Somebody said to me in, in reading and studying that the sheep was helplessly lost. I don't know if we'll get real far, but I want to get here. The silver coin was unconsciously lost. What do you mean by that? It is an inanimate object. It has no emotions. It has no feelings. It has no conscience. It has no senses, but yet it represents someone that is lost. And listen to me close. Of all the lostness in this parable, that second one concerns me more than anything. You know why, Brother Brian? Because it was, it was not lost helplessly. It was lost unconsciously. In other words, listen close, listen. It wasn't even aware that it was lost. Is that where you are, son? Is that where you are, ma'am? I just left a family of 62 people gathered for my mom's 85th anniversary, and we thought, all the time there and while there and on the way back and ever since then. Was there 62, Lynn, Derek, was there 62? 65 maybe with my mom, my dad didn't make it. But 62 people, Brother Brian, I wondered, my own flesh and blood, every one of them, every one of them, how many of them realized, how many of them are cognizant, how many of them are aware that they're just like the silver. They're lost, but they don't even realize it. How dangerous. I want to tell you how dangerous. The coin was lost unconsciously. But listen, you may, you may disagree. The sun was not helplessly lost. The silver was not unconsciously lost. The son was willfully lost. Will, what do you mean by that, preacher? I mean that he made his choice. He wanted the portion of goods that fell to him. And Brother Randy, he took his journey, not God's journey, not the Father's journey. He took his journey where? Into the far country. And if anybody is, listen close, if anybody is in the far country, they're lost. But here's what bothers me, Brother Loving. This young boy, this young boy, hold on. He wanted to go to the far country. I say to you today that all three are lost. One of them is helpfully, helplessly lost. One of them is unconsciously lost. But the third one is willfully lost. Willfully. 
Now, let's think about it like this. The sheep is lost, and he probably knows that he's lost. It vaguely realizes that it is without companionship and without shepherdly care. Nobody leads it into green pastures, and nobody leads the sheep beside the still waters in the daytime. Nobody secures it, Brother Trey, in the fold at night. It feels itself to be lost, but it had no wish to be lost. Indeed, it has no idea how it became lost. Could we say today that it was lost involuntarily, but yet, although it was lost helplessly and involuntarily, it does not negate the fact that the sheep was still lost. The coin, on the other hand, I, 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 I know I need to preach. I know I do. The coin, on the other hand, Brother Ivester, is lost, but it has no idea that it's lost. Anybody got a coin in their pocket? I don't have one. Anybody have a coin? A coin? Anybody have a coin? Anybody? You getting one? You getting one? You getting one? An inanimate object. Thank you. No conscience, no feelings, no emotions. No thoughts. If this, Quentin, if this coin is dropped, where did it get lost at? In the house. In the house. In the house. Do you understand how dangerous that is? Listen, it's a bad thing to be lost. But I tell you, it's a terrible thing to be lost in the house. And I know many a young man, and I know many a young lady, and I know many an adult. They're not only lost, Brother David State, but they're lost and they don't even know it. And they're lost where? Not out there in the wilderness. They're lost in the house. If, it, if this was the dirt floor, she said, I swept till I found it. You know why she had to find it? You know how she, why she had to sweep? You know why she had to light the light? All this is typical. You know why? Because it, 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 that coin had not one idea that it was lost. Brother Mathis, I am convinced in my heart that there are mi probably millions of Americans, Brother Randy, millions of Americans. We knock on their door. We give them gospel literature. We preach to them. We hold up signs. We pray for them. We give them the Bible. We give them Bible preaching. They hear gospel singing. They hear, they, they see billboards. But yet, Miss Brooke, you know what? They're not even conscious of the fact. They have, they have no, no intellect that would even allow them to understand that according to, by the way, this isn't according to me. This isn't according to Mountain View Baptist Church. This is according to the Word of God. They are condemned already. They're condemned already. They're like, even though, even though they may not know it, they are still lost. The prodigal, he wasn't lost like that. The prodigal was deliberately and willfully lost. Look at verse number 11. Look at verse 11. He said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, watch, watch, you on it. you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be blessed when I read this. It's going to help you to understand. Look at verse 12. Give me, me, the portion of goods that fall to me, and he divided them his living, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in what? Keep reading. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he, the prodigal, would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Watch it. Thank God for this right here. And when he, he came to himself. Aren't you glad one day you came to yourself? Thank, and by the way, by the way, that's because the Holy Ghost brought you under conviction. 
You look at me and you look at he. I want to say to this audience this morning, the prodigal son was deliberately and willfully lost because of selfish decision, because of decision that brother, uh, brother and sister that he made on his own. He cries, give me the portion of good. Having gathered together all his possessions, he sets out with a buoyant stride down the great Phoenician road. His whole heart is set on the far country. And if that man is lost who goes to the far country, then the prodigal acts. I've never re read this anywhere, never even preaches that if a man is in the far country, that means he's lost. Then the prodigal son actually wants to be lost. What are you saying? I'm saying he chooses rebellion. He chooses rebellion. He chooses everything away from the Father, everything away from the Father's house, everything away from the Father's family. And I want to tell you, sinners are lost today because they're volitional creatures. They have a choice, amen. They're not a robot. I wish I had a Bible reader. They're not, they're not mindless entity. They have a mind. They have a will. They have a choice. And it's sad, yes, it's absolutely sad that multitude of people today are lost because they are willfully, they have willfully rejected God and willfully rejected salvation and willfully rejected the old rugged cross and they went down the course and the life of sin and the life of rebellion and the life of selfishness and I say to you that all of them are lost, every one of them are lost, but it's sad Sad, sad, sad when somebody is willfully lost. Prayed for, witnessed to, talked to, preached to, Christian school, family altar, vacation Bible school, youth camp, June, June Jubilee, Land of the Sky Jubilee, Old Fashioned Brush Arbor Camp Meeting, have had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Folks have loved you. Folks have wept over you. Folks have talked to you. Folks have gave you instruction. But you're going to be just like the prodigal. Yep. I want to live for me. Miss Pat, willful rebellion. Listen close, because this will also bothers me about those, Miss Paula, that are willfully and stubbornly lost. Not many of them that have had the opportunities that God's people have had in this part of the country ever get truly turned around. Could I tell you something? The far country will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. The far country will cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. The far, listen, 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 please. The far country will take you farther than you ever intended to go. How many of you believe today that when he packed all of his goods and he squandered his living, and by the way, if you'll look closely at the Bible, Brother David, it said he's wasted thy living because you know what? In that Bible day, those children were supposed to take care of their elder parents, and so the very thing, Brother Derek, that he divided, he was squandering his own father's uh, provision for uh, the later days in his life. That boy wasted and squandered it all. But I tell you, that boy, when he got down there, Brother Matthew, I'm sure he didn't envision that he's going to be sent into the fields to feed swine. I'm sure, Brother Matthew, he didn't envision that, his, that he wanted to fill his belly with the husk 
that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him, Brother Joe. He was, he was in a famine. He was friendless. He was forsaken. He was, he was, uh, he was uh, without food and without, without, without raiment and without finances. I am sure today, Brother and Sister Dean, that he never envisioned that him being a Jewish boy, probably hired by a Gentile. I'm going to feed you and to feed, to feed the swine. I want to tell you again one more time, the far country will take you farther than you ever imagined it would take you. I've known people, they've dabbled in this and dabbled in that and tried and experimented. And before they could even get a grip on it, or before they could get a handle on it, that far country, Brother Perry, had taken them a whole lot farther, a whole lot farther than they ever thought they would come. And I want to preach right now and say to all the young people of the Mountain View Baptist Church, uh, the far country is not for you. I said the far country is not for you. Uh, you don't want to go there. You don't need to go there. I pray that you'll never go there. That's the place that you need to know nothing about. Amen. Can you imagine, can you imagine that's the first destination he went, Miss Bratton. So that leads me to say the prodigal actually wanted to be lost. His idea of happiness, and I'm going to preach right now, his idea of happiness was anything but being around the Father. Brother Quentin, his idea of happiness, and I could make an application, was anything other than the Father's house. And let me say to this church today, I love the Father's house. I mean, that's the same men to preach a little bit. I thank God for the Father's house. By the way, let me preach right here. There's bread enough in despair. There's bread enough in despair. Where? At the Father's house. There's a fatty calf at the Father's house. There's music. There's symphony. And there's a sirloin. Say amen. I said there's a symphony. And there's a sirloin. Thank God I've never got to the place in my Christian life where I've soured on the Father's house. I love the Father's house. I love the music music of the Father's house. I love the people of the Father's house. I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. And when the family of God gathers, hey, friend, that's my crowd. I don't want the far country. I don't want to go to the far country. I'm satisfied. I am content, Brother Josiah, with everything at the Father's house. Amen. God help us. And young people, young people, Brother David, they get in their mind that I'm going to find happiness and I'm going to find satisfaction away from the Father and away from the Father's house. And I could keep going away from the Father's help, the servants. I'm even going to find happiness away from the Father's haughty son. That's a whole other message. Brother Steve Abbott, he thought he'd find happiness, but he found havoc. Right. Right. Miss Bonnie, he thought he'd find peace, but he found turmoil. Brother Doug Pye, he thought he'd find contentment, but instead he found calamity. He and Josh, Josh, he thought he'd get full. He thought he'd get full. We found out there's a famine. The bread and the money soon ran out. He, he, hey, Johnny, he thought, he thought he'd had bus loads of friends, bus loads of friends. But the Bible said, Miss Dickey, Brother Dickey, that no man gave to him. And did that just like the world? When your money's gone, when your spending's gone, your good times are gone, so are your friends. I tell you this, you know what about the Father's house? I've got friends that don't have no money. I've got friends that don't have a good time. Thank God these are my brothers and sisters. 
who am I talking to? I don't know who I'm talking to. But don't you cast a wishful lie and say the Father's house is not a place for you. I promise I'm going to recommend to you that the longest day that you live, the longest day that you live, the safest place you will be, and the most satisfying place that you will be, and the most joy enjoyable, say amen right there, the most enjoyable. I love when they got the fighter calf out and struck up the music and put a robe on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. I like her brother Dana Wynn. Hey, friend, it's party time. It was party time. It was party time. And I love it when it's like that. I like to be in that. I enjoy that. I don't begrudge that. I'm not looking. I am not looking to forsake the Father's house. Thank God for the blessing. Thank God for the blessing of the Father's house. This prodigal said, I want nothing to do with the Father's house. And it took him farther than he ever thought it would take him. And it cost him more than he ever thought he would pay. And there he was, friendless, hungry, dirty, lonely, forsaken, minimum wage, a Jewish boy keeping the swine, which God had already told him, don't mess with the swine. Social media, that's right, social media has all but glorified the far country. You look at social media and you see the postings and you see the pictures and you see the likes and the, the friends of all those that are in the far country and the devil will make you think, that's the life to live. That's the life I want. That's where I want to go. As soon as I can, I want to go that route. Well, let me just illustrate it like this. There's a, a any given Saturday in the fall of the year. Stay with me. Stay with me, okay? Any given Saturday in the fall of the year, 80 and 85, 90,000 people fill the college stadium of the United States. And I'm not fussing about it. I've gone. You've gone. I'm not. As long as that ain't on Sunday, friend. Hey, you okay? Say amen. Amen. Somebody ought to help me. You okay? Have fun, have fun, that's great. Support your team, that's great. But any given Saturday, Miss Sheila, 85, 90,000 fill the stadium, and the quarterback drops back, Brother Rick, on the 20 yard line. He drops back, he's got a rifle on, he's got a speedy receiver. He drops back, Brother Trey, and he throws a bomb about 50, 60 yards in the air. The receiver hauls it in. Miss Jada makes it all the way to the end zone. He turns some of them guys, you know, they, they turn a backflip, or they spin the football like a top, or they do some kind of dance or shuffle. The icky shuffle, I don't know what they all do, but they celebrate, they have a tie. Everybody's standing up in the stand. They're throwing popcorn, uh, spilling their dray, uh, hugging each other, uh, uh, high-fiving each other. With COVID, you do this, amen. With COVID, they're doing that, but they're just having a big pie. But then somebody says, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a guy down there with a black and white jersey on, black and white stripes. He done throw the yellow flag back there at the 27-yard line. And he said, guess what? It's all going to be called back. It's all going to be called back. He walks out in the middle of the field, Brother Jared. He blows the whistle. He said, hold it, fat boy number 73. That's right, a little bit of humor. Number 73, hold it, call the touchdown back. And the whole area out of the stadium is let out. And they all sit back down and gather their drinks and gather their popcorn. And you know what? That supposed touchdown got called back. Now watch this. It got called back because there was a flag on the play. And social media and the people on social media who are glorifying the far country, they're having their popcorn and their drinks. They're having their beverages. And they're having their rocking good time now. But don't you ever forget this Sunday morning the preacher said, There's a flag on the play. 
when there's a flag on the play, a little humor again, fat boy number 73 for holding, he's going to be held accountable. He'll go back to the hall and he'll say, my bad, man, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, man. I can't believe it. You know what I'm talking about? He's held accountable. Not the quarterback. He's held accountable. If there's anybody in this sanctuary this morning that you remotely think, you young men, you young ladies, you remotely think that the far country is for you, you remember what the preacher said. You may get there. It may keep you there. And it will cost you there. And it will lead you farther than you ever thought about going. And here's where the flag comes in. One or two places. The white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. The judge of all the earth is going to hold you accountable for your life. Could I ask you a question today? Are you like the, are you like the sheep? Are you helplessly lost? Are you like the silver? Are you unconsciously lost? Are you like the lost son? You're willfully lost. Are you willfully lost? Let, let, let me put it to you. Let, let's, let's take this to an encounter. I've never done this. Brother Brian, you'll love this. Let, let's take this story, Miss Krista, to an accountant. A mathematician, an accountant. If you look at the first picture, you have one sheep out of a hundred. One sheep out of a hundred, so you lost one percent, right? The second picture, you have one coin out of ten. So now, Brother Brian, you've lost ten percent. Am I right about my, am I right on my math? But Miss Lynn, when you come to the third representation, you have one son out of two. And Landon, one of them is lost. So now I go from I go from 1% lost, my math, 10% lost, to now, Josh, 50% lost. If we looked at it through the eyes of an accountant or a mathematician, Miss Bonnie. 1%, 10%, or 50%. Listen to me now. Is any of them less lost? No. Listen close. But yet, one percent, and here's what I'm going to finish. One percent, Brother Mike Lee, was so much loved and cared about. And listen to close, church. One percent was so much loved and cared about that the shepherd was willing to leave the 90 and 9 in the wilderness as if they did not even exist. I love this. Because you know why, Brother Officer? They're going after that one percent. I don't want that one sheep to be lost. And then, and then, the lady, watch this, Miss Sheila, the, the dowry, the, the wedding dress, the, the, uh, the, 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 the head dress, ten stones. Brother Dean, if, if all ten of them wasn't there, there's no use in wearing it. As far as she was concerned, it was an incomplete head dress. Those other, somebody could have said, well, you still got nine. Who would have wore it like that? You women wouldn't have worn it. Who, you've got nine? Yes, but I've got one lost. So, Miss Pam, it's as if she took the headdress off, put it down, because those nine, that 90% she had, mattered not to her when 10% was lost. Now, here's what I really love. Somebody could have went to the father and said, Father, don't worry. Don't be in agony. Don't be heartbroken. Father, Father, don't worry so much. Don't be under such a strain. Why are you weeping? Father, you still got another son, and he's still in the field, and he's working. So, Father, you've only lost 50%. And it was as if, Brother John, that other son in the field, 
did not exist. Say, you can't prove that. Oh, yes, I can. Because the Bible said when the prodigal son finally started coming back, the Bible said when he was a great way off, when he was a great way off. Mom, think you need to come out here. Hey, Mom, I think our boy's coming. He'd been looking the whole time. That's what God thinks about being lost. That's God's heart in being lost. That's God's love in being lost. The shepherd was willing to leave the 90 and 9. The, the woman, the Holy Spirit, willing to leave the 9 and go after the one coin. And, and the father willing to go forward. And the Bible said he ran. He ran to be reconciled to that one son. So you can look at it through the mathematician's eyes or the accountant's eyes. But listen. It's all null and void. It doesn't matter whether it's 1% or 10% or 50%. They're all lost. And they all need to be found. When I think about the sheep, Brother Bennett, he was lost in the wilderness. That's verse 4. Miss Malia, when I think about the coin, it was lost in the house. Brother Josiah, when I think about the son, it was lost in the far country. Look at me. Please listen. It doesn't matter if you're in the wilderness or in the house or in the far country. You're still lost. It doesn't matter if you were lost in the desert. Now watch this. And this is one I really need to preach maybe another time. Not only was that coin lost in the house, Brother Kevin, but it was lost in the dirt. And I wonder how many young people are, are not only lost in the house, Brother Cam, but they're lost in the dirt. It's possible, it's possible to be in the dirt in the house. And it's probably, it's probably, I told my wife the other night, there's no telling what some young people are into. There's no tellings. The corn was in the dirt. And there's a lot of young people. They might be at the house, Brother Dennis Mabry, but they're still in the dirt. And by the way, the Holy Spirit can sweep it, and the Holy Spirit can bring a light, and the Holy Spirit can make sure that you're found. So it doesn't matter if you're in the desert or if you're in the dirt or you're in degradation and sin, the far country, you're still lost. Do you know why you're lost? Do you know why you're lost? Because your parents gave birth to you. You're lost because you were born. You're lost because you was brought into existence. You're lost. Somebody needs to be helping me. You're lost from day one. You come into this world lost. I say you come into this world lost. She coming to the piano. And I'm done. Listen close, and I'm finished. The good news of this whole parable is somebody's looking for you. Somebody's looking for you. God, if y'all would give me a little bit of time, I have not taken my time. I've taken my time. That shepherd, he, he left the 99 in the wilderness. He went out looking like Mike. He went looking. For the one. That lady, Brother David, had, I should have brought a broom and a light. She swept the house. Lord, God, there it is. Yeah. She'd have never found it, Miss Pam, had she not been looking. Yeah. That, that daddy, God, that daddy. Oh, I wish he'd come home. God, I miss him. God, I wonder what trouble he's in. What's become of his life? 
What's happened to him? I saw that dust moving. It looks like him, and I think that's him. And he ran and fell on his neck. Somebody's looking for you. They're looking for you. March the 30th, 1976, at 10.30 p.m., at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, sitting right about where Dennis Mabry's sitting, maybe, maybe a little bit closer where uh, Miss Cud, Mrs., Mrs. Cud sitting right there. I wasn't looking for him. I was lost and really didn't even realize it. I mean, I was lost and didn't even realize it. And I didn't see him, and I didn't hear him audibly. Brother David, he walked that aisle that night. Yep. And the whole time, Brother Yank, he came right back there. You know what he was doing? He was looking for me. <laughs> he didn't have to look far. He knew where I was. But I love it when he showed me where I was. I said, oh, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm going to go to hell. And I don't want to go to hell. I want to be a Christian. God saved me that night. Never been lost again. Let's stand. Could some of you come pray? Would some of you come pray? Will you pray? Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Parable of lostness. Are you lost? Are you lost? Would you let God save you today? Would you let the Lord into your life today? Is there somebody here that raised their hand? Thank you, little girl. Thank you. Is there somebody here that raised their hand and said, you know what? I, I, I may just very well be the one that this message is for. That I'm lost, I'm lost. And, and I tell you, preacher, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I really don't want to go to hell. Would you let me pray for you? Lift your hand when I see it. Take it right back down. Would you lift your hand? Just do that for me. Just do that. Just lift your hand, son, lady, boy, girl. Just lift your hand. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you today. I just want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, you know this audience. You know the needs of this audience. I pray thy will be done, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing. Like the prodigal son. Good, good, good. Sing, son. I wandered in darkness. Sing it, son. Sing it. Sing it. And I traded my life for a world, for of, good a world time. of good time. No peace in my heart. No peace in my, my heart. I ever could find. I ever could find. I got so tired. And I got so tired. Let's sing it with him. Eating after the swine. Let's sing it with him. Think about the day. So I believe I'll go home and eat with the Father. The table is spread. The table is spread. They're waiting. They're waiting for me. I can see the Father. Me. You don't have to stay Lord, lost. I'm willing to be just a servant for thee. You got a chorus? Sing the chorus again. Sing the chorus. So I believe I'll, I'll go home, home and, and eat with the, the Father. Father. The table is spread.
to stay lost. I can see the Father coming down, coming down to greet me. Lord, I'm willing to be just a servant for Thee. Thank you for picking that song. Thank you. That's great. Great. All God's people said, thank you for being here, all of you. We'll, we'll be back at 6 tonight. I hope you have a great afternoon. And pray for these that are in the